think I have it. The best vlogging setup. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down this Canon camera, all the settings and accessories to go along with it. And stick around because at the end of the video, I'm gonna be giving you my tips for being a master vlogger. So what's the camera? Well, it's the M6 Mark II by Canon, the ultimate vlog setup. I'm gonna go over this M6, but the settings and gear will apply to any camera you use. This is the camera body. It's a bit dirty. I just got back from the Middle East, Saudi Arabia and Oman, but this is Canon's best mirrorless camera for under $1,000. You could go for the bigger full frame R series camera, but it's gonna cost you at least two times as much. The M6 Mark II, it's compact and with Canon's famous CMOS sensor, in this case the APS-C sensor with the EFM lens mount. And it's a great alternative if you don't have the budget to spend on the larger full framed bodies. The video is superb on this. It shoots 4K at up to 60 frames per second. And the photos, they rock too. I've been taking a lot of photos with this and they're easily shareable via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth from this to Canon's app on your smartphone. And from there, you can fire them off right away to your Instagram or TikTok. It's great. I found a local shop here in Italy and I paid 692 euro for the body. I've looked on Amazon in the USA and it comes in at around $850 or $1,100 with the 14 45 millimeter kit lens. The lens, well, that's the masterpiece in all this. This is Sigma's 16 millimeter prime lens. A prime lens, well, that means there's no zooming in or out. It's just fixed. And in this case, fixed at 16 millimeters, which is a perfect wide wide shot when you're out and wanting to vlog and getting a lot of area around your face, holding the camera out. It has a 1.4 aperture and that's amazing. What that means, 1.4 aperture, that means it's gonna give you a nice bouquet or a super blurry background that everybody wants and it makes your face super crisp and you get that nice, warm, blurry background. It has the EFM lens mount, and that means it fits right onto the M6 with no adapters needed, made perfectly for the M series cameras. Now on Amazon, I found a great deal where this was a returned item like new, and I paid 365 euro i'm not sure about the price in dollars but that's a great bargain on this super lens so look around on amazon i'm going to put the link down below so you can check out all the bargains on this lens now what you're going to want to buy right away is a microphone relocation mount basically a cold shoe mount because with the m6 your cold shoe mount is here and if you put your microphone there, you're not gonna be able to use and view this monitor here when you're out vlogging. And this one's made by the great company, Small Rig. And it has one, two different cold shoe mounts that you can use. And it has so many quarter inch holes drilled all the way around this thing, even on the sides. So if you wanna turn your camera into vertical mode, you can do that and get Instagram stories shot in that way. And it also has a couple of what I believe are three eighths inch holes. And it comes with this little thumb screwdriver. You don't need any extra tools. You just use this to screw it onto your camera body. You can still access the SD card and your battery here. And what I like about this cage right here is that when I'm holding it, my pinky sits right there. And it gives me more grip around the edges here so I have a nice solid grip on my camera when I'm out there vlogging. The microphone, I was using this Saramonic microphone, low profile, but there's no shock system on that. And a lot of times I was getting handling noise if I bumped my camera. This thing cost $25. So I'm going with the old faithful that everybody uses and it's a great microphone, the Rode Video Micro, coming in at $55. And it has this shock system, it has your cold shoe mount there and the 3.5 to 3.5 cable. And it mounts easily to your camera. You just slide it in that cold shoe mount right there and you plug it in on the side here. Pro tip, I ripped off that camera door so you can easily access 
your 3.5 jack. Batteries, well, you're gonna wanna pick up a few extra. I still have the original Canon battery that came with the M6, and you can go the Canon route, or you can save money, which is what I did, and go with a third-party manufacturer. I got these two batteries and a dual battery charger by Artman. I'm gonna put the link to this and all the other accessories down in the description below, so you can check those out there. For the tripod, I buy all my tripods from Manfrotto. It's an Italian brand and they make quality products. They may cost a little bit more, but it's well worth the investment and you'll keep it for all of your different cameras. I use the 209, which comes with this extension piece so you can get even a taller tripod to mount to the bottom of your camera. And it has the famous 492 ball head on it as well. And it's super smooth and it allows you to get any sort of angle. It screws in there and pro tip, be careful so you don't cross thread the screws on the bottom of your cage or worse yet on your camera body and it's just like that you can also move it in any direction so you can get your perfect vlogging shot at an arm's distance but i carry this extension in my back pocket if i have this tripod up on the top of a car and i'm speaking to camera and i need some extra height now the cost on this beautiful italian tripod well it's a bit expensive if you're looking for a small tripod i think it's around 150 dollars the other thing i'm going to recommend is this clear uv lens filter and it's 67 millimeter and it just screws on right there on the front. And this thing is genius and it'll save you because you can scratch and you can nick and damage this and it's better doing this, a $20 item, than a $1,000 lens. This thing saved me when I was shooting at the beaches because all the time you're cleaning it and you get that salt and the sand on there and you're trying to rub it clean, but instead of rubbing on your lens itself, on the lens glass, you're rubbing on this clear filter and that's much better because you're gonna get micro scratches on that over time and so it's better to do it on that than on the lens itself. Again, this is 67 millimeters, so it screws on perfectly. The other option is you could go ND filters. I've used those before. They allow you to shoot in super bright conditions. They come in four, six, or 64 different measurements. I've used them, but I don't like carrying them and messing about with them all the time. I just screw this on and I leave it on all the time. Now the other option, the other bit of protection is I use the lens hood and this came with the Sigma lens itself and it snaps on there. And what this does, two things, it helps prevent lens glares and the other thing it does is it helps protect the lens. So if you're hitting it up against something, it's gonna hit the lens hood and maybe break your lens hood, but it's not gonna break that lens. So this thing is extra protection. If you're enjoying these videos and you have a vlogging camera, or you're thinking about buying a vlogging camera, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. Help the community grow and don't miss out on any of the videos that I publish here on the channel. Now let's go into the camera settings on this camera to make it the ultimate vlog setup. Now this camera shoots awesome 4K footage, but I go all 1080p, either 24 or 25 frames per second. I know some people prefer 30 or even 60 frames per second. What do you think? What's your opinion? Drop some comments down below. Do you shoot in 4K or do you shoot in 1080p? The other setting that's important is the in-body stabilization. You can turn it off or you have two options for the stabilization. You have enable and you have enhanced. Enable crops in a little bit on your image. Enhanced gives you more stabilization for those bumps, but it crops in much more. I prefer the first option, enable, and I find that's enough. Also, your lens, some lenses come with stabilization, so if that's the case, you have that on, along with level one stabilization. You're gonna be golden. It's like you get your camera mounted on a gimbal, but even with the Sigma lens with no stabilization and on level one, I find that it's enough. If you carry your camera around nice and gently and you have that ninja-like move and you don't drink too many coffees, you should get nice smooth images and nothing too jittery. The final thing you want to consider are the audio level settings. Now some people say you should go in there put it on manual and move it up one notch. Now that's the perfect audio setting for your microphone, but I don't mess around with it. I just keep it on auto and that does the trick for me. But that's it, those are the settings for this Canon M6 Mark II. Now let's get out there and shoot on this. <laughs> What 
my tips for becoming a master vlogger? Well, shoot in 1080, forget about 4K. It just sucks up the battery life on your camera and it creates massive file sizes that are both a pain in the neck for video editing and if you need to send them over the internet. And besides, everybody's watching these videos on their small smartphone screens. Carry extra batteries. I always carry a couple extra in my pocket and I number them one, two, three, so I know which ones I've already used. This one's number two, this one's number three, and number one's in the camera. Forget about the lens cap or the lens cover, it just gets in the way of you filming content. To protect the precious glass, I use the lens hood and this clear lens filter. That saves me and that gets me out there filming content faster. For the external microphone, keep it simple. I use the Rode Video Micro or I suggest to use something else that doesn't require batteries because that's just gonna be something else that's gonna go wrong, that's gonna get in the way between you and filming content. You need something that you can flip on your camera and you're ready to record. You don't want to turn on the microphone, you don't want to think about batteries for the microphone. And one other thing on gear, considering carrying around a compact and lightweight tripod like this one, it goes from 40 up to 130 centimeters and it's perfect for when you're looking for a place to set up your camera but you can't find a place to do so. And that's perfect and it saves me. And finally, just go with the automatic settings. Don't fiddle or mess about with the manual custom settings. It just prevents you from getting that shot when you're out and about. All those dials and all those settings you have to mess with. I just put it on automatic and go out there and shoot and that should make you a vlogging master and create the perfect vlogging setup. <laughs>